Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Friday, Friday, July 19th, and the energies in the day adds up or reduce to number seven vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. When it comes to the spiritual guidance, we are rocking with the nightingale energy and with the nightingale energy and the day adding up and reducing to number seven vibration, this brings me to the thought of like either a breath of fresh air, speaking your truth, being able to breathe, needing to take a deep breath to breathe. Um, Venus energy rules the day because Friday is associated with Venusian energy, but the energies in the day adds up and reduce to number seven vibration. So that's where Neptune comes in. So we have Neptune and Venus both influencing the day. Venus energy deals with the things that we value. So big emphasis on values today. Like yesterday's energy also dealt with values also to a certain extent values to a certain extent where we found some of us may have found ourselves like just feeling um you know feeling a little bit like damn like i'm not doing enough or i should be further type of vibe where today yes venusian energy dealing with value but then neptune plays a part so it's like Neptune brings us deeper into ourselves to question, why do I value what it is that I value? Where with yesterday's energy, I mentioned the importance of why, you know, what is your why? Why do you do whatever it is that you do? Like, what is your why for the things that you say you want so badly? If you find yourself feeling disappointed because you're not where you should be. Where do you think you should be and why do you want to be there? Do you wanna be there because it's something that you truly want or do you want to be there because it will mean something about you? It'll prove something about you where today's energy allows us to go within ourselves to a certain extent and ask why. But with the moon and Capricorn, the moon, our inner world is in a space where um, we could find ourselves a little bit aggressive or turbulent or hostile when it comes to our inner world, our inner conversation, um, an inner world and an inner conversation where some of us are policing ourselves to a certain extent. And when I think of the nightingale energy, to, to me, um, what could be beneficial when it comes to a day like today is pulling out your journal and releasing. Like when I look at the nightingale, the nightingale looks like it's releasing. Um, and we can release in different kind of ways. Um, releasing in the sense that to me, whenever I turn on my camera and vent, that's a form of release. And after I feel so much better. And even when it comes to creating these videos, like I never know what I'm going to talk about or even in the pick a card readings um, that I do. I love doing those quicker card readings because in the process of me doing the reading, it's like a channeling experience where it's like I'm communicating and I'm allowing the thoughts to just flow. And when I'm all, when I'm all done and I'm listening back, a lot of the times I get answers to questions that I had or solutions to problems that I had where it's like I'm aware of the challenge or the problem but I just know the answer will come. I don't know how it will come, where it will come from, what it will come from. I might be looking outside and notice the frog and the frog doing something. And from me questioning and observing, the answers come or, or 
I'm, you know, creating the video and the answer come or someone makes a comment and, you know, I'm responding to a comment and I'm thinking to respond to the comment and the answers come, whether I'm thinking to respond to the comment and the answers come from that or someone says something and what they say triggers something within me that sends me, you know, within myself questioning things. But, you know, at the end of the day, the answers that we see come from within us and things on the outside of us will trigger and activate um, guidance that's already within us. Um, I think of like my life and my experiences in my life and the places that I've lived and the people that I've met. And I feel like when I think of like different chemicals coming together and different things are activated within different things from, you know, different chemicals and things coming together. And that's how I see my life as far as the places I've lived or the people that I've come across. Um, my time in the salon, I feel like was like the most powerful time or one of the most powerful times of my life because it felt like college. Like it felt like fairy and laboratory at the same time where it's like so many things was being taught even in moments when, you know, I felt challenged or overwhelmed or frustrated, like I was learning, I was growing. Like that's where I learned and developed people skills. That's where I learned and developed communication skills. That's where I learned myself. That's where I learned a lot of things from interacting with others. So, you know, when it comes to say us crossing paths with other people, it's so easy to want to avoid people and isolate ourselves. But for me, like that's when I was taught my biggest lessons. That's when I was challenged. That's where I was tested. Because you know, I think of how some of us will isolate ourselves and say, I'm working on myself. And when you cross paths with others, you know, you find yourself easily triggered and frustrated. And it's like that's the time where you get to get tested to see if the work that you've been doing on yourself is actually working. You know, when it comes to say yesterday's energy, maybe some things may have came up where some of us might have found ourselves feeling tested or frustrated or irritated. And it felt like it was caused by someone else, but I feel like, you know, that's an opportunity for us to really get to know ourselves deeper, get to know why we react the way we do or why things make us feel the way we do. But um, when it comes to today's energy, big introspective energy. Um, and with the moon in Capricorn, our inner world is in a space where we wanna understand certain things deeper or we're reflective as far as our goals, as far as our reputation, as far as our status, the things that we own. And you know, with the moon in Capricorn, I feel like to a certain extent for some, it could create a paranoid feeling, a paranoid feeling in the sense that other people are noticing that you're not winning, depending on where you are in your life or how you feel, where say with certain things from yesterday, certain thoughts from yesterday could come up today and be somewhat of a trigger as some people sit and think to themselves, like, you know, where they are in relation to their peers. And, you know, this energy can also cause some of us to feel like, um, like other people are looking at us or other people are noticing that we're not growing or we're not doing enough or we don't have enough. Like with the moon and Capricorn energy, like whenever I do a chart and a person might have, say, for example, Capricorn on the 10th house or on the ascendant, and Taurus on the 10th house or the ascendant, when both those energies are on, you know, that aspect, I could see how a person could feel major pressure, major pressure to keep up a certain image where with the Taurus energy, the Taurus just feels like I deserve the finer things in life. And I feel like, yes, like we all deserve the finer things in life. But, you know, sometimes we have to pace ourselves and go about it in a way to where we don't make ourselves prisoners trying to achieve those things. But with the Capricorn aspect of it, it's like everybody is looking and I need to prove I have something to prove, you know. So with both those energies that I mentioned, the strong Taurus Capricorn energy come together, this is where a person could often find themselves like, like, I don't know, up to here in debt trying to keep up because it feels like everybody is looking and uh, sizing you up based on where you are and what you have. And 
honestly, I feel like don't nobody care. Well, I know I don't care. I know I don't care. And like I always say, like the people who are busy minding other people's business, their business is going out of business. So it's like somebody who can't even mind their own business and who ain't got no business because they weren't about everybody else's business can't give me advice on my business. And we really ain't got nothing to talk about, you know. But when it comes to the tarot, we have the two of pentacles in the reversal position. And with the two of pentacles in the reversal position, it brings me to having to put something down or feeling like I can't keep balancing or juggling um, these things. So I think of like a person, um, today's energy, moon and Capricorn, we're thinking about our responsibilities, thinking about how to create more stability, security in our world. And it's like, thinking about all the things that we're juggling, all the things that we're trying to do at once. And it's like, I can't keep doing it all. So when I look at this energy here, I think of um, how it would be beneficial for a person to come to the realization of downsizing if they need to, to create more of a peace of mind. And it doesn't have to be forever. It could just be temporary or a person decides to create a budget for themselves instead of keeping all your bills and responsibilities in your head, you know, have some kind of a book or journal where you write out every month um, all your bills that all your bills when they're due, when you're going to pay them and go back to that book to be able to organize things. Um, you know, also too with that book, you might know how much you grow, how much money you spend on groceries every month. How much money you spend on just living, um, you know, residual bills and living every month and how much extra you might have for other things. This doesn't have to be forever, but it's good to organize yourself, you know, have a plan to get to a space where um, you could be more free, more secure if that's something that's necessary. I just get more organization with the um, Nightingale energy. I get, uh, get into a place where a person could breathe. And I feel like sometimes we might feel like we can't breathe in our situation because we need to fully own and be honest about certain aspects of our situation. And until we fully own and become honest about certain aspects of our situation, it's like things just feel chaotic. It feels confusing. And we just don't know why. The moon in Capricorn squares Neptune in Pisces. So the moon is in a place where we're thinking about our responsibilities and the things we want to achieve. But at the same time, we're not being still enough to be open for guidance. I just think of like going over certain thoughts over and over and over and over again. And moon, Mercury and Leo squares Uranus conjunct Mars and Taurus. It's like even in the mind is in a place where we are rejecting structure or even sitting down and um, thinking about ways to uh, ways to create freedom when it comes to our stability and security. So when it comes to today's energy, today's energy will bring me to the feeling of I'm aware of all my problems or I'm aware of the things that are challenging for me. But when it comes to the solution, it's like coming up with a solution just feels like there it just feels like there isn't a solution. But at the same time, like I want to be in the presence with others because Venus is the ruler of the day. And Venus positively aspecting Ju uh, Jupiter and Gemini, social energies. But the energies in the day adds up and reduce the number seven vibration. So even though we're in the presence of others, when it comes to communication, it's like that might be a challenge because everybody is off within themselves and probably only want to be in the presence of others because not wanting to deal with the things that we have to deal with within ourselves. So even though we're out and about in the presence with others, pay attention to the day today, how things just feel quiet. It's like, it feels like a quiet day. Even if the day is bright, it feels somewhat overcast because the introspective vibe, everybody is within themselves trying to understand something about themselves on a, a, a deeper level. But I feel like it's not even... Um, trying to understand, I will get more of, and, and it felt like maybe something similar yesterday, but yesterday felt like it had more distractions where today, even if you try to distract yourself, you can't because it's like, you might try to use noise to get away from focusing on what needs to be focused. Um, but the noise is going to eventually give you a headache where other days you can consume all this noise and you're fine. But when it comes to today's energy, it's like, you know, 
everything outside of you feels like a distraction. On a day like today, you know, those of us who are extroverts, these days can be challenging as everybody is within themselves and have no energy to give outside of themselves. So, um, but when it comes to today's energy, like I said, we're in ourselves, we're, we're trying to understand something on a deeper level, but not receptive to gaining. It's like, we're trying to do something different. We, we want something different, but not willing to do something different. We're not open to guidance coming. We're not open to guidance, or it feels like it will require more effort and energy or more surrendering to be more receptive to the guidance. So this is where journaling and verbally um, journaling, turning on your recorder and expressing yourself, you know, will help to break down those walls so that you could be more receptive when it comes to guidance. Um, but like I said, some of us might find ourselves wanting to interact and connect with others but at the same time if you find yourself in social settings it feels like something is missing normally when you will get with a group of people and it just feels fun and whatnot it might feel like you know something's missing like the image in my mind is like someone trying to moisturize their skin and for whatever reason it's like the skin will not absorb the moisture it's just sitting on the surface and it's not getting moisturized. So it's like being in the presence of others. It's like something about the energy isn't penetrating as everybody is off within themselves for whatever reason. So when it comes to say today's energies, you know, it brings me to definitely a need to be still and be patient with ourselves because there's going to be inner conversations of, you know, parenting and policing and you know, it goes back to what I was saying with yesterday's energy. What do you want and why do you want what you say you want? And most of the times, like if you ask yourself that question about everything, you'll realize that what you really want is so simple and you probably already have it. And the extra is, you know, to fill a void or to be accepted or seen in a way um, stemming from, you know, childhood wounds, abandonment issues and things like that. You guys, it's such a pleasure sharing this message with you. Hey guys, I want to share with you seven benefits of getting a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session. The first one is understanding your internal programming. The second one is becoming more clear about your purpose and passion. The third is setting goals for success. The fourth is awareness of strength and areas of improvement. And the fourth one was foundational for me because whenever you're aware of your weaknesses, no one can use them against you. And when you're aware of your strengths, that makes you unstoppable. And that is why I say self-awareness is a superpower. The fifth benefit is removing obstacles. We first have to become aware of a thing in order to remove it in the first place. The sixth benefit is understanding relationship dynamics. We don't have to change the people in our lives. We have to become aware of ourselves and start from there and everything changes. And the seventh benefit is upcoming transits. If that's something that you would like to look into because you're planning for something or you just want to be aware. So if you're interested in booking a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session or learning more about it, the link to book or the link to send me an email for questions are both within the description box below. If you'd like to check out my Patreon where I share exclusive content, the link to check out what's happening on Patreon is in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a purple heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.